things. Uh, they <coughs> they started somehow from um, uh, from number theory. So, so I think people were interested in in the Riemann zeta function, but that's too difficult to understand. So then then they tried to look at um, so zeta you know zeta function. Uh, you can you can write it as an infinite uh, product over primes, and people noticed, roughly speaking, that um, when when you think of uh, of graphs, uh, then when you want to count to count some 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 paths which uh, which go back to to zero, some some loops, you can you can cut them also into into minimal loops. Uh, and so you you have some kind of of prime decomposition which arises there as well. So you so you have some some e halat data function which is related to to graph which you can also write as as a as a product of things, and and there is this notion of um, of um, of graphs of prime graphs somehow so 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 of of prime loops of loops which um, so and this has to do with. Um, so, 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 so they are called the loops which which don't backtrack somehow. So, so in, in initially this was a, I think it was really a, somehow motivated by um, by number theory. Uh, so something which we cannot do for the most interesting case somehow. Let's try to do it on 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 graph. Um, so the, so the Japanese school actually um, thirty or forty years ago uh, was very active here. So so Ihara was a somebody from Japan, Sunada also has done lots of things there. And uh, as, so again, that's, that's a low level understanding of, of things from me, but um, people realized maybe um, what, 10 or 20 years ago that you can do analysis with that as well. Um, so, so, so there was this, this problem of, um, of highly uh, mixing graphs of, of Ramanujan graphs. If you take, if you take a, a graph, <coughs> uh, a random deregular graph. Uh, what will its second largest eigenvalue look like? And you know, um, uh, will the, the second largest eigenvalue be um, the, the norm which you obtain from from the from the mackey keston distribution, which is uh, for us in triplicity theory the, the 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 norm of the sum of um, 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 of free, um, uh, freely independent uh, Bernoulli um, distributions, and um, so it's Joel Friedman, I think, who Joel Friedman was one of the first people who who saw that this non-backtracking theory um, uh, was um, was working um, well, and then it was really developed in depth by by Charles Mordenave. Um, he um, but all this was about uh, understanding um, graphs and specifically some very so, so so when you want to understand a graph, you want to look at its adjacency matrix, which is you know somehow um, the, the matrix which you obtain by taking um, the, the the a sum um, a sum of matrices uh, related to generators. So it's some some something like. A, a degree one polynomial with coefficients one uh, all around, and and the idea somehow is we are still interesting in a degree one polynomial, but we would like to do it with um, with matrix coefficients. So this is why we try to look into um, an operator valued version of of this. <clears throat> so instead of um, of hand waving, let me just uh, state. Um, <clears throat> One or two lemmas. So yeah, maybe uh, one more thing which I should, which I should say is that uh, we developed it, you know, uh, uh, hands-on because um, because we needed it um, uh, to understand um, the behavior of random uh, permutations. <clears throat> but in our second paper, we we did things a little bit more systematically, and this is what I would like to explain uh, today. I would just like to to state uh, two lemmas. Uh, which um, uh, from our second paper uh, with uh, with Charles. So what what we do um, is um, is the following. We take um, uh, so this is uh, some Bordenave and Collins. So this is the 
this is the this, this our second uh, paper, which is um, I mean, we just have two papers together. So what what you do is maybe let me call it a proposition, a proposition, proposition. No, should T R O P proposition. So um, we let them. Um, B1, there, there are a few technical things, so I should take my notes here. B1, uh, BL, B some operators in B in a Hilbert space, some bounded operators in a, in a Hilbert space. And I'm also assuming here that you have um, um, an involution on 1L. So I have a a star operation which satisfies that that star star equals the identity. <clears throat> it could be anything. So before I you know, I, I took this um, I took this uh, I said okay L is going to be um, it's going to be some mi minus part and plus part and the involution will be uh, will be minus one, and this will have to do um, with taking the adjoint. But here we actually we don't need any of, of this. We, we can just scrap uh, all this for now um, at this uh, um, for this lemma. <clears throat> and um, we assume that uh, uh, so we let um, lambda be a complex number such that um, a lambda square does not belong to the spectrum of um, a bi bi star so i star is you know, is uh, is uh, i applied my involution to to i here and this should be for every i in one else so I, I just want to make sure that lambda belongs to none of this of this l spectra of this of these l operators bi bi star for i between one and l <clears throat> and i create some the matrix uh, A lambda, let A lambda be the matrix, which I'm going to write like this. So I'm making a, um, a separation between, between zero and one and L. So plus some I between one and L of B I lambda, where uh, B I lambda between one and L, this is uh, the I lambda, sorry. So this is lambda B I lambda square minus B I star B I inverse. So that's actually why I needed the spectrum uh, condition. And B zero is a bit different. So this is for I in one L and B zero of lambda uh, this is minus one minus sum for i between one and l of b i lambda square minus b i star b i inverse b i star. So that looks a little bit um, dirty, um, but I will explain in, in, in one second what I mean. First of all, this is built to this is built to work somehow. So what we have is that. Then, so the statement is so 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 far these were definitions, and then what we have is that lambda belongs to the spectrum of B uh, if and only if if and only if zero belongs to the spectrum of um, of a lambda. And where so I should have said that B is the non backtracking uh, matrix of so sum for J not equal I star of BI, uh, sorry, BJ, BJ tensor. I mean, so here one comment is that actually we could take BI here. This would actually give the same, the same result. I mean, there is a, a conjugation property, but okay, let me just. Um, Take this here. <clears throat> so um, we start with some. So what we are doing is we are relating 
we are ready. Let me OK, let me just highlight what what needs to be. So I have this definition of a matrix A, which depends on lambda. And I have this matrix of B, and then the result is that I have a relation between the spectrum of B and the spectrum of, of A lambda. So the um, and actually the proof is not very difficult. If you if you write on what it means to be in the spectrum, basically you have a recursion relation which kicks in and and which um, and and things happen to um, things happen to work. So the question is, uh, how can we how can we use how can we use this? <clears throat> um, because so so in practice in practice what we have is we would like to have the matrix A to be our linearized thing. So we would like the matrix A to be something like this. Okay, we like to be some A0 times one plus A1 times U and so on and so forth. Um, and then we, so, 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 so for my B, um, if the AL which I cooked up with A was of this form, then I would be able to say something uh, about uh, the, the property uh, uh, for A to be invertible, so namely of, of, of zero to be in the spectrum of A. So in practice, that's not exactly what we want. In practice, what we want is we want given A to be able to say something about its spectrum. So we have to go the other way around. We have, we have for any A, it's more specifically for any A plus lambda identity, we have to be able to, to, to cook up some B, which, uh, which will, um, uh, whose, uh, such that if I create this transform, I obtain A. So let me just write it, uh, let me just write it down. Uh, so for, um, so, so the practical use somehow, the practical use of uh, this uh, uh, proposition is as follows. <clears throat> For A, which is something like this, you know, uh, A0 tends I plus A1 tends U1, and so on and so forth. Um, so, um, so here, really, what we have, what we have to to, to stick to the notation, these these people here they all belong uh, to to B of H. So tacitly, tacitly, what we really want is we have we want to have H, which is some C, uh, a K tens H prime, and we want so yeah. So 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 we have the K by K matrices here, and we have we have our random permutations here or something like that. Um, there, so for for uh, a which looks like this, um, we want um, we 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 want uh, some b uh, uh, such beta, some some b such mu uh, that detects that detects uh, if. Um, uh, mu belongs to the spectrum of A. And um, there is a way uh, to, to do so, actually. There is, there is a recipe for this, uh, which, which involves free parameter. So that's, a, you know, that's, a, that's a, another proposition. So what we do is, <clears throat> Um, so what we do is we introduce them. We introduce the um, the the still just transform G mu, which is uh, mu uh, minus a a inverse. So now I'm going to I'm going to assume here, 
So here I'm going to assume, let's put it that way. I'm going to assume that actually um, I'm going to assume that A belongs to um, M K tends um, the free group. So so to uh, the um, the free group um, factor. So and I will even do like this. I will say that it belongs to B of L two of some. How many do I have? Maybe I have. Uh, uh, how many did I have? Maybe yeah. Maybe I should B L F L. Was it L? Uh, yeah, it was L. Okay. Is the free group on L generator? So I'm assuming that A belongs belongs there. Um, <clears throat> so um, we we take we take this guy, which will again uh, be an element of this of this algebra, and then um, what we do is the following: we look at um, so I'm going to take uh, this, this notation. Um, I will write that G, so the notation is that um, a G U, I'm going to write it in the, in the matrix form with rapidity. I, I will think of this as, as an infinite matrix. And I will write it like this. This is G mu of, let's say, um, a G H for G H in the free group. Okay, so again, I, I, I so I, I take the tensor structure here, and um, I have a canonical basis here, uh, indexed by the free group elements. So this is the this is the row entry, and this is the column entry. So so in other words, these these um, things here actually they are elements of mk okay and then what we do is that uh, what we do is let me just get back in uh, in black if i um so if i um, call a g1 gl the generators Of, um, uh, of the free group on L element. Then if I take AI, I take um, AI to let um, we define somehow define AI to be uh, G lambda E E inverse times uh, G uh, lambda uh, E uh, G I. So this is this is a, a K by K matrix and another K by K matrix. Then we have that then we have that so 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 with this we define our matrix A. So this defines the matrix this so i define a matrix um, um uh, a like this and then we have that mu does not belong to a mu doesn't belong sorry, to the spectrum of a if and only if one does not belong to um sorry i think i'm so this is this is a this is a b here and this defines this defines a non backtrack this this is what i need to define the non backtracking um non backtracking matrix if and only if one does not belong to b which i could come b mu if one doesn't belong to the spectrum of b mu so this proposition is the way 
you use that proposition. So you given you don't want given B to study A, you want given A to study B. So with A, you cook up you cook up um, some coefficients uh, B I that way, and uh, they are cooked up in such a way that uh, so uh, that mu does not belong to the spectrum of A if and only if one does not belong to the spectrum of B. And actually, you can even say more. You can even say that mu doesn't belong to the spectrum of A if and only if actually the, the spectral radius, the spectral radius of B mu is uh, less than, than one. So, to, so given a mu, if you want to check if mu is in the spectrum of A, then you create this matrix uh, B, which depends on A and mu, and you try to, to compute its spectral radius. So the matrix is created in a, you know, I mean, there is a bit of work to, to create the matrix, but once you have the matrix, then to compute its spectral radius, basically you have to you take a high power of the, of the matrix and hope that the operator norm of this high power um, um, goes to zero. And um, what is nice now when you take a high power of this is that thanks to its uh, a nice structure, uh, which, is, which is here basically, thanks to the non-backtracking thing, actually, what you really have to do is you, you, have, to, you have to show, uh, roughly speaking, that a, a product like you know that like on average um, a product of these coefficients uh, is small. Uh, that that's really how how things work. So you have this. Uh, you don't have to to count um, all the all the um, all the people who go back to zero. You, you really have to, to 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 take a product of these things. So that's uh, that's the idea basically, and. Um, this happens to be tractable with uh, with some work. Let's uh, let's say that um, that way. That's what I wanted to um, to say. I mean, then once we have that, uh, we can so applications. Maybe I could, I could just say that way. So applications, um, applications. Um, so the first thing that I quoted is. Um, that uh, random permutations, so IID, IID random permutations, they converge in operator norm uh, on the orthogonal of the Perron Frobenius with high probability. As I mentioned, uh, as my example, what uh, four or five? I, I forgot of the of the first uh, lecture. So this is uh, this was our initial motivation. So uh, twenty eighteen, I think. Um, and um, another application, which our second application, which somehow motivated us to to streamline somehow this this. Uh, uh, this this use somehow what initially our original proof was just working for permutation somehow but we realized that actually this uh, we needed it for arbitrary unitaries so we had to to improve it and actually here just for your reference this is even much more general you could this can be any uh, any operator this the same strategy works actually irrespective of the choice of the operator the the, the only constraints are are here. Um, so what we have is that, um, um, so if we pick, uh, let's say V I is uh, U I tens a Q plus tensor U I bar tens Q minus. So what, what we do here is we take U I, which are I I D har and we take we fix a q plus and q minus some integers some non some non-zero integers 
Well, actually, no, they could be, they, they could be zero. That doesn't matter. Um, uh, but, of, but yeah, I mean, I want that Q is Q plus plus Q minus. I still, I want this to be positive. Um, then what we have is that this is, so this, this pair, V, V1 and VL, uh, is also operate on a convergence. On, so here will be a little bit uh, um, sketchy on the orthogonal of fixed points. So the thing is that maybe let's just, I mean, I'm a bit sketchy, but let me explain a little bit what, what it means though. Um, so is operator norm convergent, I, would, I could say maybe almost surely as n goes to infinity <clears throat> on the orthogonal fixed point. And let me just explain what the problem could be. So, um, so the, just on one example, so, so, so the problem to avoid is, um, uh, for example, um, if um, uh, Q plus equals Q minus equals one, then what I would have is that, <clears throat> what I would have is that um, the vector, so the vector E1 tends E1 plus E n tends E n uh, in C n tends C n. So here, like E i is the canonical of normal basis, uh, is invariant, uh, leaves invariant any uh, U i tends U i bar. This is just a, ref a rephrasing of the, I suppose, uh, of, of the row orthogonality uh, property. Um, so, so there is no chance uh, if I if I don't remove the invariant part to have strong convergence, because then if I if I add d if I add l people the operator will be at least l, which is not what we want, of course. So so we have to we have to avoid this situation, and this situation will will happen actually if and only if q plus equals q minus. In this case, we just uh, remove the the fixed points, so. Q plus equals Q minus equals one. I just have one dimension. If Q plus equals Q minus is, is higher, there are more actually. So there is this whole theory of uh, short value duality and invariance. I'm just skipping it here. But somehow uh, this, this result somehow uh, tells that, um, I, mean, I mean, it gives a sense somehow to the, to the fact that the only the only um, it looks like the only hurdle uh, uh, to uh, the, the, the only problem which could fail to yield operator norm convergence is the existence of fixed points or let's say of of low dimensional vertices. As as soon as I as I as I avoid this, it looks like strong convergence um, holds. So this is a generation somehow of. Um, uh, like a like a very vast generation of of the previous results uh, that I obtained with um, with Kami, uh, Mal, and 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 this result can actually absolutely not be proved um, as far as we can tell with um, um, with the existing uh, uh, with you know the techniques a la Hager of Tomlinson. So we really need here to have to have moment techniques and in particular uh, to, to use non bad tracking operator value theory. So that's what I wanted to say um, about um, this, this, this moment methods. And while well, I have something like 20 minutes left, and I would like to, to mention briefly uh, two, two other techniques. Uh, so, so, so briefly, uh, two other techniques. Uh, for operator norm convergence, which are uh, quite recent and I think uh, very uh, promising operator norm convergence. So the first one is actually um, a series of um, of uh, of work which was um, uh, initiated by um, maybe maybe it started a bit before him, but um, I mean. Um, Felix Parot actually um, uh, did um, lots of work in 
in this uh, area when he was uh, so he started this during his um, PhD studies together with uh, Alice Guion and um, and me and the idea somehow is um, is to is to take two existing um, results um, um, one of uh, Hall group turbulence on the one uh, hand and another of um, of of Jamie uh, Roland Piotr and, and myself on the other hand which is which is as follows so let's let me start from what is what is known what is known is that uh, if um, a p is a non commutative polynomial in uh, let's say l uh, l three semi circular variable <clears throat> so out of this i'm going to create p n which is um, a random variable which is evaluated in uh, iid uh, GUs. so i'm a bit sketchy here but uh, probably this makes sense x um, x n1 x n l <clears throat> um, and so on the on the one hand um, uh, together with um, uh, Jamie uh, Roland and Piotr Schniadi uh, we were interested in the following um, so if we take um, f be a take f a polynomial function a polynomial function then we want to study f of pn we want to, to to study the normalized trace of this expectation of this and what we did basically is we showed that this is that this is equal to c0 and that depends on f and p plus uh, sorry plus um, n minus two uh, c1 fp plus and n minus four so we have this this expansion and so on and so forth um, and um, so this is you know this has to do with uh, you can understand the coefficients in terms of uh, of higher order freeness, higher order freeness, basically. And that's it's a little bit rough somehow what I'm saying, but um, and on the other hand, what uh, what Hall group and Tobinson did um, uh, and Tor Yarn Sun did is they just took one. They just took one uh, GUE, Xn, and they and they they looked here. So they looked at the same problem, basically one over n trace of this. But instead, so you see here with uh, with Jamie Roland and Piotr, we were looking at a polynomial function, and the reason, of course, is because we didn't know how to do something else. And what Hagemann and Piotr did was that they said, let's let's look at a smooth function. So maybe some, I, I don't remember, so like a C6 function or something. It's like a, a smooth, probably they were doing, sorry, maybe they were doing this. Let me just be on the safe side. I think they were taking a sin theta function. And then they have the same the same kind of results uh, holds true actually. So if I, if I do this here, uh, copy and here, so the same result uh, holds true. So here I don't have maybe I should just erase dependence in P because because this is just the trivial polynomial. But they had something like this which was which was also <coughs> also true. And what uh, what Felix uh, uh, did um, actually was to so here the, the big difference between so. So what is the big difference between um, what what we and what Hagen Tobias did is that uh, they 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 did just one uh, GUE, but in exchange for this they did uh, a smooth a smooth function. So so there is this kind of of trade, 
And uh, what, um, what Felix did, uh, so maybe I will just do it like this. So, so what Paro did is he, he combined um, both um, uh, frameworks. So what he did is he actually, uh, so, he, um, so he allowed F uh, smooth to be on. So he basically uh, proved that he, he obtained such an expansion, not only when F is a paper but when F is smooth. And now what is the, what is the interest of that? What is the interest of that? the interest of that. So very roughly speaking is that if, so now let's assume, let me um, just explain roughly the, 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 the idea. Uh, if, um, so, so let's assume, so let, let me just draw the spectrum of this. So, so if this, the, the spectrum of the, of the limiting object P. If the spectrum, let's assume that, that P, let's assume that for example, P is self-adjoint. And if I only have the spectrum of P, and I'm going to draw it like this. Okay, so this is, you know, maybe it has some, some components like this. Um, and um, then if I take, uh, if I take F to be a function, which goes outside of the spectrum if f is something like this. So let me use yet, sorry, let me get, use yet one more color. So if um, f is, let's say, a function like this, mm. if f is a function which, which is, which is, um, whose non zero values are outside of the spectrum. So the support of F, of F intersection support of the spectrum, support of the spectrum of P uh, are empty. <clears throat> then in this case, um, what, we, what we would have, let's say that, what, what we would have, so let's say that, let's say that F, let's, let's say that so if F was close, let's say, close to an indicator function of some interval. Um, then, then what we would have is that, oh, sorry, so, then what we would have is that expectation of one over N trace of F of PN, this would be more or less uh, one over n, one over n times the expectation of the number of eigenvalues in the interval a b. I mean that's that's almost a rigorous uh, statement. Um, the problem is that f, of course, I want it to be smooth, and this is not a smooth function, but probably I can. You know what, what? What I could do, for example, is I, I could approximate this function by a smooth function above and below, and uh, and say that for this is true within within one minus epsilon something like this. <clears throat> and then you see that uh, well, um, if I have such an expansion and I am able to prove that the first coefficient is zero, then it will show that uh, the number of eigenvalues actually that, that that should be an integer, right? It should be an integer. Then this will be this would be zero. So it will prove that it will prove that the number of eigenvalues eigenvalues in AB uh, goes to zero. That's basically the that's basically the the strategy uh, to prove uh, to prove strong order, and and it works. So in practice, and I would probably not have to, not have time to, to explain the, the, I would not have time to explain the details, but uh, the strategy here is completely different. So the strategy, the strategy uh, 
is to uh, work is to work on the free products of the n by n matrices with um, uh, the 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 Feynman algebra generated by uh, a free semicircular uh, distributions and interpolate plus uh, uh, and consider so 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 and uh, and uh, introduce so something which I could call x n i with some let's say theta and this is something this is cos theta times x i n plus sine theta times uh, S i. What I'm doing is <clears throat> at zero, at theta equals zero, uh, I have uh, have my the, the, the Gaussian, the GUE, and at, at theta equals uh, what pi over two, uh, I have um, I have the the semicircle, and somehow um, somehow what we are doing is we are giving less and less weight to the to the crossing somehow but by doing this and uh, you know then um, by a careful so maybe I will just say it really like just really one one very short sentence plus a careful study of uh, the uh, what happens uh, over over this? So somehow it's it's a, it's a new way to interpolate between the n by n matrices and the limit which is which is free, uh, which allows somehow to to express uh, this quantity here as as an integral and which allows it to to bound it uh, uh, in an appropriate way. So actually, Felix uh, did uh, uh, so he first did this part. Um, in a joint paper with, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm saying Felix, but actually uh, the, the, the first paper was also with uh, me and uh, Alice. And then uh, later on, later on, uh, Felix uh, did uh, all, the, all the higher uh, order um, coefficients. And that I think uh, that was used, if I understood correctly, uh, crucially, by uh, recently by um, uh, Charban and, and Mireille to uh, towards um, um, uh, um, proving the Peterson uh, term conjecture through uh, Ben Hayes reformulation. <clears throat> um, so, by the way, Parot did also the same for unitary um, uh, groups. Um, this time. Uh, using um, um, a multiplicative interpolation between between hard unitaries and um, uh, and free hard unitaries, um, so I'm going to, to to skip that part. And in the last yeah, in the last four or five minutes, uh, I would also like to to, to mention very briefly. Uh, a paper which is very important in my opinion, which which is uh, which is a paper by um, uh, Ban Deira. So I'm not sure about this. I hope I have to spell Boe D R Joe and Van Handel. And what they do is they they use an idea somehow slightly similar to this, but in a sense. Um, uh, so they also obtain, they also obtain operator norm convergence. Uh, but so if this is, uh, uh, but with an interpolation, which is different from 
this and namely what they are doing this is very surprising somehow um, but it, it i mean it's but it seems to work extremely well as, as well what they do is they they interpolate some uh, uh, so, so they have they introduce maybe I should just just co copy this notation they, they introduce something like this. they introduce x tilde n i a theta and this is again cos theta x i n plus sine theta and here I will, I will call d i n so they are not working on on an abstract probability space all this now happens in the n by n uh, matrices and this is actually this is um this is um uh, this is a random and diagonal diagonal gaussian <clears throat> Um, and then they basically they prove they prove that uh, the spectrum and so they compare they compare the spectrum of um, um, sum of ai tens si with the spectrum of sum of ai gi where this is or this is here, uh, well, semicircular. This is free semicircular, and this is IID Gaussians. So it looks like this should be extremely different a priori, but but they are able to show that somehow if I see if I if I want to get a GUE, if I want to get a GUE, I need I need to to have lots to have lots of, of independence already just for one GUE somehow. So so here I have lots of you know um, of some, I have to add up lots of small rank matrices and have lots of GI somehow. Um, and I can also realize one single semicircular uh, matrix as, of course, through the matrix represented as, as a sum of many uh, small semicircular uh, matrices uh, um, somehow. And, and they are able to show that um, <clears throat> if I take, if the, if the coefficients here satisfy some nice, uh, like, you know, non commutative Kinchin type uh, properties, then the, the, the norm of this actually, the, the spectrum of this will be close to the spectrum of this uh, uh, through this kind of uh, interpolation properties. So um, they, they also have, you know, they also have this kind of, um, of idea around that, uh, that, that, that we compare something which is known, which is something which is not known uh, by by somehow bounding the, the by interpolating and, and bounding how how one uh, how how things uh, move when I in interpolate, um, but uh, yeah. So anyway, these uh, these two techniques are also, in my opinion, uh, very uh, interesting and promising. So this one, this one, and I will stop here. So this one actually still relies on linearization. You still need linearization to 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 make these two uh, to work, but in a sense, it's um. It, it, it's, it's kind of, of simple and, and, uh, and direct. And this one, interestingly, actually does not rely on linearization. We, we can just make the calculation directly uh, for any polynomial. So um, yeah, so, 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 so this, this technique, um, like the technique of Brannan, which I, uh, which I uh, described earlier, are the two techniques for which you can prove uh, operator non-convergence of, of random matrices without linearization. And since I'm over time, and since it's quite late, um, where most people are, I will I will stop here. So thank you very much. Speakers, you are still awake. So any questions from the remote audience or the local audience? Okay, I, I guess I had a question about the. Or the auto results. So it's Gaussians, but those are unbounded, right? And then the semicircles were bounded. I, I don't know if I understood that. Um, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's 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 yeah, uh, it's about. Uh, so I think uh, so. Initially, uh, I'm not going to give a, an extremely precise answer, but uh, but initially, uh, uh, initially, um, Van Handel and so on, they were interested. So first, I think they were working with. Uh, uh, with Pierre Youssef and 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 Rafael Latala and 
and they were interested in, in getting some some kinching inequalities, some, some generalizing some kinching inequalities somehow, and matrix valued the kinching inequalities. Um, <clears throat> so they you know they they obtained some uh, some matrix versions of uh, of um, of some results which had been obtained by 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 Pizier, um, earlier. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's about the probability that the operator norm is, is bigger than, than something. Um, and then they actually managed to push it to push it all the way to um, to the to, to, to the to the so not just an inequality but really a convergence of, of spectrum. Uh, if you have a, a, a proper uh, estimate on the AIs, so somehow the the AIs. Maybe it's a little bit uh, uh, surprising here because you should really keep in mind that the AIs they are of large dimension. Um, like you know, if I if I fix that, so somehow the difference between between what they are doing and um, and the previous example is that here it is completely unavoidable uh, to have the AIs the dimension of the A which goes to infinity um, to 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 actually have a have a convergence. So in a sense, you see. Maybe it's a bit surprising when, when you have the point of view of generation, but what you are redoing is you are saying that the, the semicircle uh, distribution, you can really say that actually this is n square small semicircles, which, which are put in a, in, a, in a matrix somehow. And, and these, these n square semicircles, uh, they are actually themselves uh, again in semicircles. I don't know if that makes sense somehow, but I see the intuition behind that. Okay, thanks. Uh, any other? Uh... Questions from our, I'll just unpin in case someone put their hand up here. Uh, let's see, I don't forget how to unpin now. Oops. Oh, here we go. Remove pin. That's it. Nope. Right, yeah. Sorry, I, I two things at once. Okay, yeah. Sorry. I don't know. Actually, maybe I don't think the only one. Yeah, there we go. Sorry, I'm just clicking on the wrong stuff. Okay. Okay, so I don't see any other uh, questions. So let's thank uh, Benoit again for very interesting. <laughs>